I did some real world testing on four multi-WAN VPN failover routers, and I call BS on all of them. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside and that is it. That smokiness, guys, that smokiness. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, maybe something harder as I always say, depends on what part of the planet you're on. Today, we're gonna be talking tech. Today is a router day. It's kind of Starlink, but not. The whole premise behind it started out with Starlink, me doing a live stream just the other day and things just went horribly south. My goal was to help you guys that are using Starlink or any other ISP be able to stream, be able to be live with a Zoom conference or maybe on Facebook Live or Twitch Live doing gaming or YouTube Live doing some type of streaming and not have to worry about any type of downtime, not have to worry about any kind of connection issues. And the idea was to be able to put into place a router that would do some type of failover or some type of load balancing. So we would be able to take two WANs, right? Two ISPs, let's say. For me, it was Starlink and AT&T and be able to put them together. And when one went down, the other one would pick up the slack. That's the premise behind it. So I went down this load balancing path to be able to put multiple ISPs together on multiple WANs and do this whole failover. Well, the stream that I did as of late, if you guys watched it, it was horrible. Now this was the absolute worst, the absolute by far the worst time period of any of my Starlink experience for the last eight months. And you guys got to witness it. It was horrendous, absolutely horrible. It was down for 15 seconds, then 45 seconds and 20 seconds, and one time even a minute. It was just a hot ass mess. Well, so what did I do? I ended up buying more failover routers because obviously the two that I tested and showed you in my last video, the TP-Link ER605, as well as the er 840G by UTT. I did a side-by-side -side comparison like this versus that, and I gave you the good and the bad of both. Well, yeah, that was lab testing. That wasn't real world testing. Well, the real world testing was what I did live with you guys. And once again, it failed horribly. I thought it was going to be easy. Yeah, right. And it wasn't. So if you want to see that video that I did comparing these two, check it out over here. I'll put a link up here or in the pinned comment at the top or in the description. Check it out. It is definitely interesting and it gives you all of the work that I did as far as the testing. So I ended up buying two additional routers. So we have four to test today. And that is what I'm going to do. This time, I'm just going to give you my end results instead of going through all of them so you can watch me do it. It's just not necessary. I think you guys can trust me in doing this for a couple of years now that what I tell you is basically how it is. I am not a shill for any company and I give you all of the information as I get it, all right? I share it with you. And I hope that you guys appreciate that. You're basically on my path. I'm not a guru at any of this stuff. I just do the work and then I give it to you guys. And if you appreciate it, as I always say, you could always say thank you by clicking this little button down here or just simply becoming a member of the channel. That would be awesome. Also, before I give you the results here, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. They're free just for you being here. Also, if you want more Starlink coverage, I have a playlist just for Starlink. Go check that out. Great content, helpful how-tos, tricks, tips, what to buy, what not to buy, why to buy it, which is even more important is the why behind it. A lot of the videos that I've found over the years on YouTube, they're always like how to do this, how to do that, how to do this, but never the why. 
And my channel, I try to give you the why behind everything so that even if you're watching something that I am putting together about a specific router, if I tell you the why behind it, you will hopefully be able to duplicate what I'm doing on this router on your router. Same type of thing with a camera or video equipment. The why to me is very important. Anyways, let's get right into it. So now these are the real world tests. How did I conduct them? Basically what I did is I started a stream on YouTube, a private stream just for myself. And then what I did is I went and unplugged WAN1, which is my main feed, let's say my main ISP, which is Starlink, so that WAN2 would take over, which is AT&T. Starlink, you know, is like about, let's call it 100 meg down and maybe 10 meg up, whereas AT&T is like 20 meg down and about 1.7 meg up. I know it's crap but it is what it is. So this is how I conducted it. I pulled WAN1 so that it would swap over and then put WAN1 back in so it would swap back over to Starlink. How did it work? So starting out with the very first one that I did, which is that TP-Link ER605. It is a gigabit multi-WAN VPN failover router. It does all the things, as they say, right? Well. The switch over between WAN 1 and WAN 2 took about 25 to 35 seconds. And once we did the real world test, the amount of time it took for the swap to happen from WAN 1 to WAN 2 while being live was in excess of 50 seconds, sometimes like 58 seconds, a minute for it to do that swap. So if I was live with you and WAN 1 went down and Starlink went down, it would take a minute for it to swap over to WAN2. Obviously, not very helpful. The next one that I tested was the business class version of that ER605, the TP-Link ER7206. That is, once again, a professional grade, this time, router. And it is basically the exact same router, but just beefed up. It has a better processor in it. It can handle more tunnels, on the VPN side, it just has more of everything, more memory, more, more, more. But how did it do when it came from switching from WAN 1 to WAN 2 and from WAN 2 back to WAN 1 when we were live? The same crap, guys. The exact same crap. Nothing. There wasn't a second difference between the basic version to the professional version. It was exact. Nearly a minute for it to do that swap. Now, people would be like, well, did you do it right? Was there something wrong? I'm glad you asked. I spoke to one girl over at TP-Link and there was a serious language barrier. We have talked to you guys about this in the past. I do a lot of tech stuff and I talked to a lot of the different companies and I don't know, I didn't know what the hell she was saying. I just didn't. I mean, I tried my best and eventually I just had to move on. I started doing some more testing on my own and then I called back again, hoping to get someone that I can understand. I did get someone over at TP-Link's technical support department that I finally was able to understand. We went through everything and she said, you did everything correct. Thank you. I appreciate that. But there's nothing that we can do. Basically, it takes that damn long. I'm like, well, how do you sell a router or routers or all these solutions that are supposedly be failover, load balancing, but they don't really do it? She's like, yeah, that's something that we're working on getting our times down or whatnot. So, okay, it is what it is. We can't use it, but the one thing that she did, which was very nice, is she said she was gonna contact her engineering department and give them the information and have them reach out to me if they come up with some type of workaround. So I will let you know if there is a workaround for either one of those two routers. Maybe, maybe not. I have a feeling not, but we will see. Anyways, we moved into the UTT ER840G. Now, this was another, once again, gigabit, multi-WAN, VPN, failover, load balancing router. And we tested this in the last video to see how it worked out with that 605. And it did really well. I like the router. I like the setup. I like the features. I like the way it is put together, so to speak. But we ended up with about 38 seconds time to do that transfer from WAN1 to WAN2, from WAN2 back to WAN1. 38 seconds is not going to work if you are in a Zoom conference or if you're in 
some type of stream, you're doing, like I said, Facebook or Twitch or YouTube or whatever, 38 seconds is like the stream is dead. We're going to move on. All right. You, you just you can't do it. It's not possible. So after everything was said and done with UTT, I said, you know what? Let me reach out to the technical support and see if there is a fix. Bottom line is there is no fix. This is just a speed issue inherent to the device. And for it to swap over, it's taking that long, which isn't really bad, I guess, where TP was right around a minute, where this was about 38 seconds. Let's call it 30 seconds even. Every once in a while, it would slightly be faster. So it's about twice as fast, which isn't too bad. Now, we moved into the final router, and that is the TrendNet router. It is a TWG 431BR. Once again, gigabit router. It is a multi-WAN VPN business class router, a little bit beefier than the others. And I said, you know what? Let's give this a shot and see if this works. Now, this thing came with rack mount plates and all kinds of other stuff. And the actual back end to it is really quite nice. It's very basic. It feels like it was based around the open source DDWRT, if you know what that is, that firmware, um, that software. It is quite robust. There is a lot, there's a ton that you can do with this unit. The thing with this one is it doesn't have failover. It has load balancing continuous load balancing is what they call it. And instead of having one primary WAN port and then maybe other LAN ports that can be used as WAN ports like everyone else does, they have it set up so you can do a 1.4 or a 4.1. What that means is you could either have one WAN and four LAN, or you could set it up as four WAN and one LAN. That gets into a few other issues that we're really not going to cover in this video, but basically by having that one LAN out, if you need to do any type of QoS, you need to go from that LAN out into another managed switch to be able to do it. But I digress. How did this thing work? Well, the real world, once again, we're streaming. We pull the plug on WAN 1, and I swear, guys, it was instantaneous. It went from WAN 1 to WAN 2, and there was not even a dip in the ping that was going on. There wasn't a spool that happened on my YouTube stream. Nothing. It was just like I didn't even pull the plug. A true continuous load balance. So you would say, wow, this is really good. This is the end result. This is the one. Not so fast. Not so fast. While it switched to WAN 2 immediately, it never switched back. It never switched back. That was it. It was stuck on WAN 2. So what did I do? I'm like, you know, this is just, this is, this is perfect and it's just stupid at the same time. How is this possible? I called up the TrendNet people. And I have to say, these people are based in the U.S., um, they speak English. They are extremely knowledgeable. I've talked to multiple people over there. And unlike all the other manufacturers, you literally can speak to someone. That being said, we went over all of my settings, everything that I did. And they said, yes, you did everything right. I'm like, okay, great. That doesn't make me feel good. I'm happy about that, but I'm not happy at the same time. I want this damn thing to work. And the guy was like, you know, I have a feeling it has something to do with sessions. I'm like, let's go ahead and try that. And what we together determined was that the actual nature of this unit doing this continuous load balancing would do it in such a way that it was very session oriented. What does that mean? That means once you start a broadcast, a stream, a Zoom conference, anything, that is a session. And during that session, if there is a failure, it will move over to the next WAN, but it will not move back until the session is over or a new session starts. What does that mean? That basically means for me to use this or you to use it for once again, Zoom or Facebook or any type of conference or meeting or Twitch or whatever, your gamer, whatever it is. 
you would have to stop your broadcast. You would have to stop your stream and restart it for it to actually move back to WAN 1. I throw my hands up, guys. I, I just, I can't. I don't know. So what they said is they were going to also talk to their engineering department. Once again, this is almost positively, I don't want to say 100%, don't quote me, written on this open source, DDWRT. They should be able to make some type of allotments in there or modifications to fix this, but maybe not. I don't know. I really don't know. But they are going to reach out to me to let me know if there's a way around it. So what exactly did we learn here? Nothing, guys. We learned absolutely nothing. No, I'm just kidding. What did we learn? We learned two different things. Number one, we learned that if you need timely load balancing or if you need failover, none of these routers are going to work for you. But if you need load balancing or failover, not timely, but failover, with let's say maybe even 38 seconds in between the fail. So going from WAN 1 to WAN 2 and from WAN 2 back to WAN 1, and it takes 38 seconds, and you're in a home and you're watching TV, 38 seconds isn't really going to make too much of a difference. You're probably not even going to see your movie spool at all. Then I would probably recommend a TP link. Why? Because it's still, in my personal opinion, the best value, the best bang for your buck. What I'll probably do is put links to all of these down below. You can go check them out. Those links are my links, so I might make 25 cents. So if you use them, I appreciate it, but you don't have to. The one thing that I ended up doing after all of this, doing all this real world stuff, is I ended up buying yet another router, which will be here tomorrow. And I'm going to put it through all of its paces. And I'll probably call technical support if the damn thing doesn't work. And I'll go through everything again. And I'll let you know if this one works. I spoke to one of the tech support guys, the good ones, you could figure out who that was, and they recommended this specific router because it did this specific thing, and I'm not going to get into it, but it should work. Should. We will see. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. As always, if you have, please throw this video a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click this little bell icon over here so when I go live or when a new video comes up, you will be notified of it immediately. And, and head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Also, once again, don't forget to check out my Starlink coverage, that playlist. There's a lot of good information over there. Check that out. Maybe I'll put a link right here. I love these links. Check that out. Anyways, guys, I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.